The subject of our next lesson on photosynthesis from Chapter 16 is the Calvin Cycle. The Calvin Cycle involves a series of reactions that are the so-called dark reactions. As we'll see in a later lesson, it's a bit of a misnomer. It involves three phases, and that's illustrated in our figure here. Phase 1 is the phase where we actually fix CO2. That's followed by phase 2 reduction where we convert the molecule to a different form. And then finally phase 3 is regeneration. So you'll notice that this is a cycle just as the citric acid cycle. We're going to regenerate our starting material and that's the entire purpose of phase 3. Let's begin with phase 1, carbon fixation. It's catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco, which is an acronym for ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase, a rather involved name. As we'll see, it tells us what it does, but there's a reason why we've given this an acronym. It's an enzyme that sustains most of the Earth's biomass, either directly or indirectly, so quite an impressive enzyme. It is the most abundant biological catalyst. It accounts for about half of the entire protein content of a chloroplast. Perhaps part of its abundance has to do with the fact that it's not very efficient. It can only fix three CO2s per second, but as we'll see, it's quite an involved process, so not too surprising that it's not very fast. It can act either as a carboxylase or oxygenase, and that's part of the name. Here is phase one, and it is carried out entirely by the Rubisco enzyme. Our starting material is ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate. In step one, we're going to abstract a proton to create an ene diolate. It's the ene diolate that's going to nucleophilically attack the carbon atom in CO2 to fix it, so it adds to that number two carbon. So we take off that proton first so that we can create the nucleophile that will fix the CO2. In step three, water attacks the third carbon, the carbonyl carbon here, and the oxygen atom will act as the nucleophile in that case, and now we add OH. We've done this step so that in our final step, when we split the molecule between carbon two and three, we have two identical molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. This is all of phase one, and now we can see a little bit better why we have the name ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. It's an enzyme that carboxylates, adds a carboxyl group to ribulose bisphosphate. Now we're ready for the simple reactions of phase two reduction. We're going to take each of those three phosphoglycerate molecules and add another phosphoryl group from ATP. So here's our first ATP cost. We form bisphosphoglycerate in that case. This then becomes reduced and we're going to take off that phosphoryl group to create glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. In this case, since we're reducing the molecule, we have to ox we need a source of electrons, so we're going to oxidize NADPH. So now in these steps of reduction, we can see why we needed the ATP and the NADPH that we got from non-cyclic electron flow in photosynthesis. Keep in mind, we have to do these steps for every molecule of 3-phosphoglycerate, and it will give us, in each case, a molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Phase three is regeneration, where we're going to regenerate our starting material. Remember, we started with ribulose uh, bisphosphate. The end product of regeneration is initially ribulose 5-phosphate, so that's a 5-carbon compound. We're starting with glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate that we produced in the reduction reactions. So we're going, in this case, the C3 molecules are all glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and we're going to combine and rearrange them so that it's going to cost us five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and when we complete our regeneration, we'll have three molecules of ribulose 5-phosphate. And the rearrangement of those molecules is illustrated here, just to show you that it is a series of rather involved steps. You don't have to know the details of this. Simply the ratio. It takes five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to form three molecules 
of ribulose 5-phosphate. Our final step in regeneration is to take that ribulose 5-phosphate and convert that to the bisphosphate that we started with and there's our other ATP cost. So our net reaction, if we fix three molecules of CO2, it cost us nine molecules of ATP, six of NADPH, and we only netted one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate because remember, three CO2 molecules will give us six molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, but we needed five just to regenerate our starting material. So to fix one CO2, three ATPs and two NADPHs, and that cost us, remember, about eight photons. So to make one glucose, 18 ATPs and 12 NADPHs. Quite an energy hog, and now we see why we need those light reactions so that we can generate the energy and reducing equivalents that we need for this rather involved process. In our next video lesson on photosynthesis, we want to see how the Calvin cycle is regulated. We'll also look at the steps of photorespiration and examine its purpose.